What's going on guys? I was recently just viewing Asmongold's stream and it got into the discussion of, oh, have you quit WoW? Have you quit this game? Have you quit that game? It snowballed into this conversation about what will become of WoW in the future. People were speculating and I said, if I was going to come back to the game, A, I'd probably play retail. B, what is the game going to be in the next expansion? I'll probably wait until the next offering post Shadowlands because I'm just not a fan of the amount of time required. Complete a task, earn some renown, and then wait on a timer for X period so that you can play the game again. It was very reminiscent of a lot of the Facebook games that required currency that you would either earn by playing the game to a certain point or you would pay money out of pocket to have more of that currency to play longer. Not a fan of that model at all. So I'm hoping the next expansion will be a reaction to the huge drop in player base that has become wow. The bad press aside, just focusing on the quality of the actual game. What is this new expansion going to be? Apparently it's leaked. Asmongold's done a reaction, so I'm going to react to. This one's like Deathwing and like Alex Strazer. Horns? Tails? Scales? So they're really leaning into the furry thing. So it's like that race from Final Fantasy? The dragon people? Posting on a throwaway for obvious reasons. Here it is, the actual leak, taken from a private game dev discord last night. New expansion is straight up called The Dragon Isles. Okay. All marketing put together has the tagline, Azeroth has awoken. What? Azeroth got woke? <laughs> Oh my god! Oh no! New zone to Dragon Isles, new race. If this is anything like what Kathleen Kennedy did with Star Wars, I'll be sad. Because that's another good franchise down the drain because of this woke movement. Black Dragons. A uh, new system, world shaping. Okay, let's see what this is. End of Shadowlands. In the fight with the Jailer. World shaping makes me think of what Ashes of Creation is suggesting with the notion of nodes and each server, if you will, has its own individual history because it was shaped by the players and how they interacted with the world mixed in with a little of procedural generation and RNG. That could be interesting. That could flip the game around. Azeroth is ruptured. Okay. We beat the Jailer and save the planet, but there's consequences. Some stay a while and listen events after the fight describe the state of Azeroth. Magni reverts back from diamond form. So he's no longer a diamond. Okay, that's nice. 9.2.5 pre-expansion event uh, being put together is huge. Lots of reused events like earthquakes and invasions, but a massive time-walking event that's being designed as a mini-season of mastery across... Lots of Azeroth-centric dungeons and raids. Devs want players familiar with the history of Azeroth before 10.0. A big tour of old events and lore. This is actually a good idea. I, I hope they do that this. That is a good idea. This is smart. Yeah. Although I haven't played through all of Final Fantasy, I know that each expansion builds upon the last one, where even if you start as a new player, you're experiencing all the content from start to finish, which some players don't like, but that's just a question of their patience. I like being able to go through that whole story, even if you make little tweaks here and there to remove some of those fetch quests and redundancies. I like being able to experience story, especially if it comes with voice acted cinematics. I wonder if they're gonna take us on a tour through all the old lore by creating up-to-date cinematics. With the budgets that they have, there's no reason not to. And they really have flopped on a lot of cinematics that they've created in the past. They have the means to make really compelling storytelling productions. This is actually good. I, I, yeah, this is a, a straight up good idea. I yeah. would love to see this happen. A lot of these things are probably bullshit. Like with any of these leaks, you're going into it expecting it to be bullshit, but I'll still look at it as if maybe it's not. You know what I mean? So we'll see what the rest of it. Craze, Trogs, Quillbor, Manton, and Elemental Invasions cross Kalimdor. New World Boss, Garadon, Son of Galakrond. Oh, shit. So if they bring if they bring Galakrond into WoW, I don't know who who uh, Galakrond is like the this is how big Galakrond is. Whoa. This right here, I believe these are the dragon aspects. This is Deathwing. This one's like Deathwing and like Alex Straza or something like that. This is the idea of how massive Galakrond is. Like Galakrond is like a gigantic fucking. It's like the uh, the WoW equivalent of Anakal gone to black. 
right? From like the Cimmerillion. Whoa. It's like a gigantic fucking dragon that can darken the whole skies just by flapping its wings, right? Massive, huge. That's a big boy. Dragon. Sounds pretty cool. And his skeleton's in Northrend, so I don't know how they're gonna fucking deal with that. Well, that was a fake Galakron. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, let's see here, new expansion. 10.0 cinematic being put together as the biggest Blizzard has ever produced. Entire cinematic team has been developing this for over a year. All cinematic team, good, yes. All Shadowlands pre-rendered cinematics were scrapped <laughs> and the whole team moved on to this. It's a love letter to Azeroth, mirrors the original WoW launch cinematic yes! and ends with Azeroth being born. As a result of Jailer's assault, Azeroth the Eternal is born from the world soul. She's a dragon, sort of. Okay, this might end up making World of Warcraft into a more solo play game, but I'm still interested because being able to play through Final Fantasy, chasing after those voice acted cinematics that really tell a story. Those are the, my favorite parts. You can see on my channel, I've got a little playlist of all the cinematics that really just engaged me and made me feel like, dang, this story's cool. So if they manage to do that and raise the bar, I'm down. I would come back for that. That's very interesting. So she's a, uh, a part dragon. All world souls are unique and Azeroth's essence has indirectly shaped the planet for aeons. Dragons are tied directly to Azeroth who is so sort of the dragon progenitor. Oh my God. Once players reach the Dragon Isles, they work directly with Azeroth to reshape the world. Story here is that the planet has taken a beating over the last couple of decades and it's having dire consequences for everyone living there. So global warming and climate change. That's mm. the new raid boss for the new expansion is uh, climate change. Wow. Funny joke. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Azroth is a character described sort of like Lilo from the fifth element, a supreme but being but with the mind of a child. Prayers need to help her unlock her powers to heal the planet. She's in a temple on the Dragon Isles with Thrall and Rathian Lots of Earth Warder lore as the three of them tried to do what Deathwing couldn't. Azeroth has her own talent tree. It looks very much like the old school talent trees from Classic. Players can help- oh great, so there are there completely useless talents that nobody uses? Players can help her by training her via the tree. Each talent is also usable by players through the World Bond ability. New abilities are like Covenant abilities, but no additional locked in choices. Everyone- their abilities that benefit everyone by being a part of the same world. There's no way they'll make it unique to each world. That's too much programming. One gets the same abilities. Abilities have secondary effects depending on the zone that you're in. One example is an ability like Abomination Limb that works as a grappling hook. But how do you give that to everybody? I mean, like a mage, why would a mage need that versus like a, a death knight? For a Probably for things like jump challenges or like puzzles that exist in the world that could be cool i'm sure it's not like an ability ability i'm sure it's like you have abomination arm that works like a grappling hook and then within this particular zone there are things to interact with a warrior or a rogue yeah I, I don't know how that's gonna happen like that seems a little bit crazy to me okay uh dragon isles will change over time via world shaping some pretty cool massive changes like a whole zone turning from a desert into a forest that's really cool. Straight up. So it is like the nodes, at least described by Ashes of Creation. Like that's really fucking cool. I like that. That I sounds good. Uh, zones heavily elf focused <coughs> with night elves trying to discover a way to restore Teldrassil with Azeroth's help. That's you cool. plant trees and tend to a huge forest there, like a massive version of the, of the Mists of Pandaria farm. That sounds cool. I could see this being interesting. Uh, there's a lot of this. It sounds, okay, Azeroth ha I like the idea of everyone coming together. There's not really a question of war against the factions. It's more about, yeah, we're on separate factions, but we have a common goal of restoring Azeroth and learning about the history along the way. Hatching and being the progenitor dragon. Yeah, it sounds stupid, but all of the actual systems that they're talking about doesn't really seem that bad. However, that's usually how it goes, is that at the very beginning, it looks really cool, and then it does not turn out that way. That's what I think could happen. Uh, world shaping unlocks new abilities in each zone. Water walking, flying, teleporting, spectral sight, treasure finding. That's cool. All of this is cool. I like this. Some older zones, Eastern Kingdoms, and Kalimdor will be getting big updates during the expansion. That's great. Mm. 
this is also a good thing. Will they do more voice acting outside of cinematics? With the size of Blizzard, with the budgets they have, can they adapt the same philosophy that Star Wars The Old Republic had, but with World of Warcraft's engine, voice acting, quest, so that you actually feel like you have some stake in the world instead of just like click accept, click accept, use this add-on that guides you where to go. Yeah, I mean, what's wrong with that? That sound like all of these things are good. <coughs> Black <coughs> Black Dragon works like Worgen. Customize your dragon form and humanoid appearances. Humanoid can be any race, including allied races. Extra customization options for humanoid form include horns, tails, jewelry, scales, as well as effects like burning eyes and molten blood, which is huh. a cool new effect. <coughs> Okay. So they're really leaning into the furry thing, guys. That's what oh, we're getting out of this, yeah. They're really leaning into the furry thing. Sounds kind of fake, I don't know. <clears throat> dragon forms mainly used for travel to racial abilities. Story will explain why black dragons need to learn how to fight like mortals as one of the classes. Okay. Black dragons can be warrior, mage, rogue, druid, hunter, warlock, priest, shaman, and paladin. All the original WoW classes. Okay. So, fuck demon hunters and fuck monks. I like the sound. Agreed. I'm not a fan of those either. They don't really compel me as much. The classic classes are always good. I don't think we ever needed more classes. Now to this. Black Dragon Druid War as shapeshift forms are, quote, super fun. Well, every time Blizzard tells me something super fun, that means it's guaranteed gonna be super fun. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, there it is, guys. It's just settled. Yeah, it's super fun. Uh, Rathian has been trying to recapture Black Dragon fights since Kata. Players <coughs> are new dragons. The Rathian has been overseeing in the Dragon Isles. Rathian has recruited and kidnapped class trainers all over Azeroth to, to train his new flight. <coughs> the Warlock trainer will cause some players to flip out. Why? Flip out why? Could it be Gul'dan? There's no way it could be Gul'dan. That would be so stupid if it was Gul'dan, man. I would be so annoyed. It could be a Nixia. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they could do something like that. Yeah, make it a Nixia. Resurrect the Nixia again. Uh, right. <clears throat> Everything's off the table. I think what they've shown with Shadowlands is that the points are made up and the rules don't matter. It doesn't matter what they said last year. That was last year. That's this year. Fuck that. Um, yeah, <clears throat> totally different experience now. Totally different world. Yeah, the, the rules are completely different now. Lady Katrina Prester, yeah. That's what it could be. Cross-faction or GTFO? They're going to do cross-faction 100%, man. It's going to happen. You know it. I know it. Everybody knows it. Since Battle with Deathwing, all dragon aspects has been losing, have, have been losing their magic. Uh, new dragons players need to learn how to fight alongside mortal races to save their race. Rathion's big thing is reversing the loss of magic from dragons completely and protecting his flight. You know what? I always thought it was stupid. I thought it was dumb at the end of Dragon Soul how the dragon aspects lost their magic powers. Am I the only person that feels that way? It was just weird. It was confusing. It's like, why did this happen? It felt like a plot device. There was like no purpose to it. There was like no lead up to it. No explanation to it. Nothing. It just happened. Yeah. Okay. So I'm not the only person. Okay, good. Yeah. It was just completely out of left field. No big bad in 10.0. But there are infinite dragons, Netherwing, and some new Dragon Isle specific proto races. Pretty fun Trog progenitor race is actually super advanced and intelligent. That's cool. Going back to smaller zoned contained stories, big focus on discovery, soft rebooting Azeroth, the planet, and setting up for future conflicts. I'm gonna be honest, guys. It sounds compelling. If this turns out to be true, I would play this. I'm fine with it. Yeah, I'm fine with it. This is fine. Like, okay, this is, it's, fuck, it's good enough, you know? It is good Jesus. enough, and I will take good enough. At this point with WoW, good enough is fine. As long as we don't get into another Shadowland situation, or we don't get into another situation where things don't make sense, and they just do them anyway, this is fine. Oh, you want to make Azeroth a dragon? Fine. You want to give her new customization options? Fine. Just make the game good. You know what I mean, guys? W what do you think about this one here? Do, do you like this? What I'm really hoping for is awesome cinematics throughout the experience. Giving a good hat tip 
to much of the old game to bring people in and know more about the lore. Making the lore actually make sense by involving people who actually understand the story and the history. You know, get like, <laughs> maybe whoever's producing these cinematics needs to go watch Platinum Wow. <laughs> Because he just has every piece of information you need to understand how things came to be in those worlds. And then when it comes to this notion of cross-faction that everyone's mentioning, I feel like that's a good thing. People say, oh, well, if you don't want to PvP in the world, then you're just playing World of Craft. Shut up, you're dumb. That's not how good games work. Go play whatever the, the what's that old game that has PvP in the world and stuff like that and like hardcore pvpers we'll play something else or not azeroth is officially woke no boob slider well they did say there were new new customization options i don't care about every expansion since legion it's the same for me well i hope that it's actually good i mean that's all it really comes down to yeah i, I this this could be worse i'll say that for sure less micromanagement yeah they've got to get rid of like these systems that they have that's what i think is really killing it for people like things like the legendary system uh etc no more yeah. chores yeah it's like the chores <clears throat> the chores in the game are just way too many fucking chores. Again, I'm excited for whatever comes after Shadowlands, primarily because it won't be Shadowlands. I think that Shadowlands lore, the worst thing about it is how good it could have been. It's like yeah. Warlords of Draenor, where like Warlords of Draenor was so bad because it could have been so good. With B and I got excited when I first started playing Warlords of Draenor, even though I was doing like the Romia time walking thing. The cinematics seemed cool. You felt immersed in the story. Then the story didn't really go anywhere. I was kind of bored after a while. And then I just went back to playing Shadowlands, which was again, just mediocre and didn't make a lot of sense to me. So I think this idea of taking the overall story, improving upon it, bringing everybody onto the same page, and then creating a common goal for everyone to operate on, that makes sense, and I think that's going to have positive results, at least in the beginning. We'll see if they fumble and drop the ball. BFA, that sucked. It, it, you know, it's... Expectations were low, the ceiling was low, everything was low. But with Shadowlands, it could have been so amazing, and it just wasn't. It just straight up wasn't. Same thing with WAD. So, just if they bring out a new expansion with no chores, uh, you know... And this is what I was talking about at the top of the video. The chores being, you have to do these things, and then, once you're done, you're on a timer. We'll see you tomorrow in 18 hours and if you don't do the thing when it comes available again in 18 hours then you're just setting yourself back until you do those things and then once you do them you have to wait another 18 hours or whatever the number is not fun just a way to milk my subscription fee which is annoying i'll focus on all that Zeroth, smaller scale stories good class design and fun systems that's all we ever really wanted, isn't it? That's all we need to see. Just do that. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. Just polish it and keep it rolling. You need to do something interesting with professions? I agree, man. I agree. So yeah, that's the uh, the 10.0 leaks. See if there's any other features about this. Anybody else talking about it on the WoW Reddit? Oh, man. Look at that one. <laughs> oh, wow. I love this. This is the original, and then they made it better, and then it got old, and then it just got deformed. This is funny. <laughs> Might finish later when we have the resources. If we have the resources. <laughs> uh, this, except you have demons and legendary weapons. This, except you have, what is this? Like an amulet? I never played BFA at the time, so I guess this was what they were doing. And then, oh, there's a carrot on a stick that you're constantly chasing so that you can get your specific covenant abilities. Oh, and that's like the food. Cool, new food. <laughs> These, man. The Mr. Pandaria one's my favorite. It'll be really cool if much of what is being described in that post is true, but I'm not holding my breath because there's a lot of this that just means making a good game, but I'm waiting for the Kevin O'Leary approach by Blizzard. How do we make money from this? What are, what are they gonna create transactions for? There's probably gonna be a ton of premium content in the store that you can buy. They're gonna advertise. Oh, you should buy this, you should buy that. They sell boosts, so I'm gonna be annoyed.
but then again in the retail setting boosting is probably less of a big deal because if people aren't interested in the story they can skip it but i'm hoping they take a final fantasy approach and make the story the main driver for playing we'll see